we do appreciate and thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, O oh God. There is even extended to us, O oh God, even this evening time. Father, Lord Jesus, may you bless your children, Father. May you keep them, O oh Lord. May you strengthen them, O oh Father. Especially as we approach the hour of the coming of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Father. We just appreciate you, God. Father, Lord Jesus, we appreciate the gift of life that you've given us, O oh God. We just say thank you, O oh God. May you help us, O oh Lord Jesus, even to move from one step of glory to another step, O oh God. Heal the sick, Father. Bind the broken hearts, O oh God. And Lord Jesus Christ, even those who are being tormented by one or another thing, Father, may you just heal us, O oh God. We thank you, God. May you bless the reading of your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May God bless you. Uh, thank you so much. We shall turn to our Bibles, and as you turn there, uh, that is for Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 to 3. Amen. Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 to 3. And uh, as uh, you turn your Bibles there, uh, I would like to greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brother, I sing you. May God bless you. I would like to believe that your family is okay. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You're all welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. And, uh, uh, just nice seeing you in the house of God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, we shall read Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 to 3. And the Lord appeared unto him, that's Abraham, in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And uh, as... Uh, you take your seats. We shall read also uh, another part of uh, the scripture in the New Testament. And uh, that will be Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. We shall read from verse 35 to 42. Luke chapter 18, verse 35 to 42. And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, that is Jesus, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. 
And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith has saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. Amen. Amen. I just want to read the same uh, incident, but this is in the book of Mark. Chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. Mark, chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. Just the same incident. It says this, And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Madmeas, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith, have made thee whole, and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Uh, I just want to say one or two things is the Lord's table, then uh, we take part in the Lord's table. And uh, uh, these are very common scriptures to us or to any Bible reader. And I just want to uh, speak a few words from uh, uh, Genesis chapter 18. I'm getting my text from verse 3 just to share a few things. And uh, I'm not going in detail on this because of what time and because it's the Lord's table time. Uh, Abraham saying here, and he said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. Amen. Uh, it's a thought we've uh, talked uh, on it many times, but I just want to put a little title on it, Pass Me Not. O oh, gentle Savior. Amen. And uh, before I do so, I just want to greet you once again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, I would like to believe that uh, uh, you're growing in the Lord and uh, every day and you're just moving on, especially as we see uh, the day drawing nigh to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And... Uh, uh, God is good. I believe he's talking to us. Amen. And as I always say, not because I'm standing here, 
but because of Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus is alive. Amen. And Amen. Jesus will use any servant of his. He has many servants he's using right now. The minister in the gospel in America. The preaching in African countries. The preaching in South America. Uh, the preaching in Europe. He has his children scattered all over. And he's using them to speak the word. And uh, we were just uh, sharing a quote at home uh, where my wife was reading to me some quote where the prophet says that God uh, speaks to you using the minister and God also will use your neighbor to speak to you and God will use your brother. God can use your sister uh, to speak to you. Amen. So it is not just uh, the preacher standing here. Uh, but God always speaks to his Amen. people. Amen. But uh, the most intricate part is to know that it is God speaking to you. Amen. That has always been a fact that eludes many people. Uh, when uh, people come into the house of God, uh, they really do not uh, know who is this that is speaking to them. And uh, as I've always said, that uh, you need to know the voice of God. Amen. And uh, you need to know when your master is speaking to you. Uh, because if you do not know, it is too bad. And remember I told you, if you read the Old Testament, in the book of First Samuel chapter 3, uh, you'll see when Samuel was being called by God, he kept going to Eli and saying that you called me. Uh, so you can just imagine uh, how, uh, you know, he could not tell the difference. I want you to see how close it can get. He couldn't tell the difference uh, because the voice was like the voice of Eli, but it was God speaking to him. But he couldn't tell the difference. He couldn't know who it was. So he just thought, it is Eli calling me. Uh, but you see, it was actually God calling him. So it is possible for God to call you, but you ignore God. It is possible for God to speak to you. If somebody is speaking, wake them up. I've just started. Amen. Take care of your brother so I don't get uh, on the wrong side with him. So, <laughs> you know, let's... Uh, let's uh, you know, let's take care of each other. You know, those are some of the pet peeves of mine. Uh, when I see people sleep in church and I've just begun, it throws me off. So just, yeah, we will try to do a few things, changes here very soon. So, uh, uh, you know, those are some of the things I'm talking about. Yeah, so... Uh, you don't know it is your father speaking to you, so you may not care that much. And uh, uh, it should not be like that. We should be, when uh, a minister stands here, we are all in the spirit to receive from God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, the prophet used to say, uh, if you walk into a praying congregation, God begins to speak. But if you walk into confusion, uh, you know, confusion, it affects the person standing here. So it throws you from your inspiration. And uh, you have to understand that. So uh, it is always good when we come to the house of God ready to hear from God. Amen. 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 Uh, maybe we'll have some ashes too to help us uh, throw those people who are sleeping. Maybe to stand up, go outside and wash their face and come back. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking of doing an election again. I think we need to do that so we can uh, uh, make sure that uh, uh, everything is covered according to the word of God. Amen. Yeah, because I see we are growing and we really need uh, men in our midst uh, to help us uh, do what we are supposed to do. So... Uh, the ministers don't wait on the tables, but uh, they can just come and preach the word of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, so let's try to do that and uh, uh, so that we don't try to interfere with what is going on, but just try to be. So 
uh, it is possible for God to speak to you and you don't know it is God speaking to you. And uh, uh, you see, once you know it is God speaking to you, you're going to be very attentive because you just want to know. Uh, it is just like uh, if you're driving, going somewhere, and you don't know where the direction to the place, but you are depending on the GPS. Now, you have to pay close attention to where the GPS is directing you. You see that? And you see, God is trying to direct us. So you need to pay attention to Amen. what God uh, is telling you. And uh, I know sometimes, as I've always said, and uh, this normally happens in, uh, even in family life, it also happens in church where uh, things get so common uh, until we don't really have the respect we need to have. Uh, maybe in the house you become so common to each other that you don't even uh, notice the absence of uh, maybe your wife or your child or your husband but it should not be so we need uh, to really be in tune with one another and in tune with God uh, I told you there was a time when Brabranham was preaching in Memphis and that was in 50s and uh, when he was preaching there, it was a Baptist convention. Uh, when he was preaching there, there was a, a young woman sitting at the back there. And uh, uh, this young woman uh, uh, represents many people who go to church, but they don't know. They are in the presence of the Almighty God. And uh, whenever something like that happens, uh, people really don't pay attention because they are looking at the man. But uh, I always say this, and uh, the scripture also says this, Paul says, follow me as I follow Jesus. And the Amen. prophet says, if the man leaves Christ, don't follow the man. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. So we are following Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So Paul says, follow me as I follow Jesus. Amen. What I actually he's saying is you're not following him, you're following Jesus. Amen. 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 But let's just put it this way. If the man leaves Christ, you don't have to walk with the man. You don't have to follow the man. Amen. Amen. Soon, uh, this uh, young woman, she was a very beautiful woman in uh, uh, maybe around 18, 19 there. Very beautiful. And Brabranham began to preach. And after Brabranham had finished preaching, uh, he pointed the back and he said, Sister, Jesus is calling you to give your life right now to him. And uh, she was very upset, uh, very angry, and left uh, uh, the church and went outside there waiting for Brother Brandon to come out so that uh, uh, she could uh, tell him a piece of her mind. As we say in this country, today I'm going to tell him a piece of my mind. Uh, so uh, when Brother Brandon came out and uh, she walked real close, very, very close, uh, to the servant of God and uh, uh, said you and pointed her finger in the face of the prophet and said you embarrass me you don't know that my, my father is the deacon of the church and all that and Bibranam said sister even if your father was a pastor it wouldn't make any difference Jesus was calling you Amen. that woman said nonsense and said, and if I wanted somebody to tell me about God, I'll look for somebody who has some sense to talk to me about God, not somebody like you. Did you know that night, that woman crossed the muscle line? She didn't even know. She crossed the muscle line. You see that? And you see, uh, this is what Jesus was talking about. The days of Noah, the days of Sodom and Gomorrah are going to be a repeat. And uh, you can see that the scripture says as soon as uh, uh, Lord left Sodom and Gomorrah, immediately he stepped out. God began to rain fire and brimstone 
on the series of uh, on, on, uh, on Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. Immediately, you see, watch, when Noah had entered the ark, of course, we all know when he entered the ark, God shut the door. And of course, he was there, first day, second day. On the seventh day, the rain began to fall. Now, I told you to those who were here in prayer meeting that uh, uh, the people repented. You think they didn't repent? They repented because they're now seeing the danger they're in. And I can see them running to the ark and saying, No, I always believed what you were preaching. It is only that I was just out there, you know, but I, I'm sorry, I believe. I believe. But you see what? Oh, yes, it was too late. Because God had shut the door. When God shut the door, nobody can open the door. And when God opens the door for you, nobody can close that door. See that? Uh, I saw on Sunday, I'm not going in detail on that, uh, where... Uh, uh, <laughs> Somebody was very upset here and left, you know, just took the pack book and just left and in protest. And uh, you know what? It may be one day you will try to make a step, you not even go forward. You have to understand God does not want anybody to perish. He's full of mercy. The scripture says it's long suffering <laughs> long suffering but you have to understand this there are time comes when you exhaust the chances God has given you and when you exhaust the chances God has given you you will never come back even if you want to cry repent and say Lord I'm sorry you can never come back to repent why? Because you crossed the mercy line. And I say this, you don't know. You don't know how many chances you have. And also you don't know how long you are going to live here on earth. You really don't know. I told you there was this woman who was in the meeting of Brabrana Manda. She left. And... Uh, you know, she was very upset at the preaching of the prophet. Very upset. Very angry. And uh, uh, so when she left, she went saying that uh, if my pet cow believes uh, Baal's religion, I'm not going to kill my cow. God was not happy. And you see, that's what Jesus was saying. That you can say anything about the son of man. It will be forgiven you. That's why when Jesus was preaching in the synagogue at Capernaum, you can find that in John chapter 6. It was in the synagogue at Capernaum where Jesus was preaching when he said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, there is no life in you. And when the congregants heard that, the, the, you know, the crowd, they left in big numbers. You see, you can do that when Jesus was here. But he said, a time will come when the Holy Ghost will be in operation. Don't play with God. So, uh, right there, the angel of the Lord struck that woman. They called the ambulance. They were rushing her to the hospital. And she was uh, breathing and uh, agonizing in terrible pain. And was saying, uh, call him, call him to come, call him, tell him I'm sorry, tell him I'm sorry, call, call. You know, of course, the message went to Brabrandam and he left. And uh, it, was, it was the service and he was rushing uh, to that woman. And uh, you see, when they reached on the hospital doorsteps, she screamed for the last. And she gave up the ghost. When the prophet arrived, they said she screamed with such a loud voice calling your name that you forgive. But you see what? It was too late. It was too late. 
If the prophet could have reached on her before, it could be something different. It was too late. The husband says, say a prayer, say a prayer. He was a Catholic. And Bibranam said, she's already dead. She's already dead. You see that? I remember many years ago, uh, I just, I just dreamed a little bit, so just, I'm coming back. Uh, I remember some years back, we were preaching somewhere, and uh, yes, I do understand sometimes when we give personal testimonies, uh, some people are very careful, you know, because they want to say, Brebranum, 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 but you must have a testimony too of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you. Because the God the prophet served is the God we are serving. Amen. Amen. The prophet left the scene, but that God never left the scene. And I believe every Christian must have a testimony. Every Christian must have a testimony like David. Who can say I was one day in the bush. And this is what Jehovah did for me. A bear came, this is what I did. A lion came, and this is what I did. This is what Jehovah has done for me. That's what the Lord has done for me. I believe every Christian must be a testimony and also give a testimony. Praise God. Amen. So, uh, anyway, praise God. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Yeah, God is good. Amen. So I was saying, uh, many times when we give a testimony, sometimes people may think you are making up to make yourself be something. But you see what? Jesus is the same. I believe is the same. And I believe that once you have met Jesus, there is something you're going to say about it. Amen? That encounter with Jesus. I believe you can stand and tell people without being ashamed what the Lord has done for you and what you've seen God do in your life or around you. Amen? I don't think it is just you looking at a servant of God, maybe in a different location, or a servant of God who has left us. And then those are the only testimonies you can give. It's all right to give those testimonies, but what I'm saying is, have a testimony too. Amen? Amen. Amen. As you say what the Lord did, in a servant of God who lived in a certain day also conclude on what the Lord, the same God, is doing in your life or is doing around you. Amen? Because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So this has been years ago, almost 25 years ago. And uh, we were preaching some, it was an open air market, and uh, uh, behind us there was a cobbler, there was a, a, a shoe repair a person behind us uh, on a veranda of uh, some store somewhere she used to uh, fix shoes. And, um, and uh, so, so we were preaching uh, around that place, it was an open air meeting, and uh, uh, this man kept saying that I'm not going to accept that because I'm still young. You know, I have to live my life when I'm too old. Is when now I'll give my life to Jesus. You see that? And you see, sometimes, uh, I, normally, I normally think like this. Uh, we went somewhere, there was uh, this uh, man who died recently. And... Uh, so they, they were saying that uh, he was uh, a servant of Christ. And I wanted to hear keenly how he was a servant of Christ. And uh, they said just before he died, a, a pastor came and made him say the sinner's prayer. Mm. 
They just said he was a servant of Christ. No, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that he never gave his life to Christ. But I'm just saying, you see, should I have that testimony where I stand before God and when the Lord asks me, what did you do for me? And I said, the only thing I did is I gave my life to you when I was dying. There's nothing you can... <laughs> well, I want to do something for God. Amen. Amen. Do something for God. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Not a preacher to come and say, okay, I, I said this is a sinner's prayer real quick before you die. Says, do something for Jesus. Amen. 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 Testify. Bring soul to Christ. Live for Christ. Amen. 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 Well, I'm not saying that people, some people who get saved at that point, you know, but uh, what I'm trying to say is, as long as there is breath in you, take pleasure in serving God. Amen. Do something for God. Amen. See that? Do something for God. So coming back real quick. So what I was saying was that, uh, you know, uh, uh, I think it, it was because of what I'd said about Jehovah's Witness. And let me tell you, there are a whole lot of things. Maybe you don't know what Jehovah's Witnesses believe. I think, God willing, I'll be wrapping on that with a few things on a different knot. Or on level, level four, we, yeah, we came from level one, two, three. Uh, we can go to level four and sum up. Uh, on what I was trying to look at. Maybe you'll begin to see and know and appreciate this message. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 And many times, many times, you may not, do you know that Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe in the crucifixion of Jesus? Check the New World Translation of the Bible. There is no crucifixion in that Bible. Nothing. But they use another word. If you have it, just go look at it. You will never see the word the cross. You will never see the word the cross. But they use the word empower. Empowered meaning just a torture stick. They do not believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if you ask them what is salvation, you'll be very surprised if they have to be honest because their books say you are saved if you are in that organization and walking around with the Watchtower magazines giving to people that's what they call salvation. Well, the Jehovah's Witness believe that Jesus Christ was just one of the angel, Gabriel, that took on flesh and came here. <laughs> Damnable heresies. No wonder that woman has to walk out. But what I was trying to say is, you can do that for the last time. I've seen people do that. And I've seen the end of people who do things like that. But you see, my prayer is, and that's God's desire, that we should all repent and come to Jesus while there is time. Because the time comes when you never move another step because God will say enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Amen. But he's a good God. Oh, yes. He's a long suffering. Amen. Long suffering. Mm -hmm. He gives you another chance. Mm -hmm. And he gives you another chance. Mm -hmm. And he gives you another chance. Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't want any one of us to perish. And also here are the dangers of believers marrying unbelievers. 
You see, sometimes you may not understand when we say uh, things like this, and I'm so glad the prophet of God says this. No believer should ever marry a non-believer at no circumstances. See that? Amen. But we jump all these hurdles and keep just breaking all of them and keep just breaking all of them and saying grace, grace, grace. Oh yes, there is a time when there will be no more grace. And uh, the way I see things going on, I know very soon, as Gentiles, very soon, God is going to make a corner. And when God makes a corner, mm -hmm. there will be no Gentile saved mm -hmm. when God makes a corner. Amen. There will be no mercy when God makes a corner and begin to deal with the Jews. Mm -hmm. So this is our time. Amen. Make maximum use of your time. That's right. Amen. Amen. When the prophet was in Cairo, he was told, no, don't go to Israel. It's not yet the time. Why? It's our time. Make maximum use of your time. While the door is open, run to Jesus. Run to Jesus and mean business. See that? So, Lord, I just, I don't want to be the way I have been. I want to look at you, look at your word with all the seriousness it deserves. Because you see, you have to understand this. God, God does not change his word for anybody. Let the word of God stay the way it is. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, let it just stay the way it is. And just believe it. Say, God, give me grace just to believe your word. Amen. Praise God. So, respect God. Honor God. Amen. And God will honor you. Amen. Amen. Don't turn your back on God. Because when God turns his back against you, it is serious. Amen. See, so, just love him. Give him the best of your life yeah. make sure that you are a holy temple where the holy ghost can dwell Hallelujah. a place a sanctuary Amen. where god can come and dwell Amen. praise the lord Hallelujah. so anyway just a little few things here coming back to now uh if you look at this part of the scripture that I, I've just read, uh, I believe, I believe that what happened in Genesis chapter 18 was also a repeat in our time. Amen? Amen. This was a repeat in our time. And you see, God operates in patterns. There is a pattern. You see, and you can, you, if, you look, if you look at um, even the way God made us, uh, you can look at a stunned animal and be able to tell by the way it walks which kind of an animal that is. See that? Amen. You see, you can look at certain birds fly in the air and uh, they may be so far away that you can't identify them but the way they fly is in a certain pattern and from that you are able to tell which type of birds or a bird that could be amen amen May God bless you. Dad, we missed you. We missed you. We had good time here on Sunday. We missed you. <laughs> nice seeing you. You're welcome. So this was a repeat in our time. We just read Genesis 18 and we're just making some remarks. Genesis 18. 
And uh, I want you to understand this, that um, when God called Abraham from the land of the Chaldeans, uh, God had never manifested himself to Abraham in flesh as we see him doing over here. But Abraham was able to tell the voice of God. And I want you to understand by this time we did not even have a Bible written. Amen. You see that? Amen. Because the first five books of the Bible were written during the time of Moses. So by this time there was no any Bible verse you could go and make reference to. But God would speak to people and through inspiration and through the knowledge and the wisdom God had given the people through revelation, they could tell which voice was speaking to them. Now Abraham was not, if I may say a Christian, Abraham was not a worshiper of Jehovah. But Abraham was... Uh, a worshiper or he came from a, a nation that worshipped foreign gods that is his background from babylon from where we all also came from we came from babylon all of us amen so then now um of course he hears a voice and the voice tells him abraham abraham I want you to leave your kindred. I want you to leave your country. And I want you to follow me to a place I will show you. There is a land I want to give to you. Yeah. And you see, God does not want you to go before him. God wants you to have a closer walk with him. Amen. Amen. God does not want you to lag behind. God wants you to keep up with him. Amen. See that? Amen. To a place I will show you. So you have to stay with me. I'm not going to give you directions. In case we get separated, you make it on your own. I want you to follow me. Amen. I want you to be with me. Amen. I want you to walk with me. Amen. See that? So anyway, that's not the subject. Uh, I'm just trying to lay some little introduction there. But now I want you to see this. This was the first time, Genesis 18, that Jehovah God. See, I know when I say Jehovah God, that makes a Jehovah Witness want to jump. <laughs> but when I say the Jehovah of the Old Testament is the Jesus of the New they sink into the that hall of abyssy you see the jehovah of the old testament is the jesus of the new Amen. he only changed the mask Amen. because you have to know god god unveils himself is like somebody playing a drama see that Amen. he can play different roles and if you are not very careful, you may think there are so many people, but it's one person playing different roles. He only changed the mask. Praise God. Amen. And that's the reason why I told you that Jehovah, just like the way we see Jehovah in the Old Testament, breathed on Adam. And Adam became a living soul. And if you look in the gospel of John, Jesus breathed on his disciples and he said, receive ye Amen. the Holy Spirit. Amen. Which of course came to ha pass or happen in the day of Pentecost. The same thing. The Jehovah of the Old Testament is none other than the Jesus of the New Testament. So now, uh, this was the first time He's showing himself in flesh. But you see, in Hebrew series, Branham says this. He says that Jehovah, God, is a spirit. Amen? Amen. God is a spirit. So because God is a spirit, you can't touch a spirit. Amen? Amen. You can't see a spirit. But you see, God has the ability 
to form flesh and enter Amen. that body. Amen. 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 God has the ability to appear to you in the form of a burning bush. See that? God has the ability to appear to you in the form of an old man. God has the ability to appear to you in the form of a wild wind. And the scripture says, and you know what? It was Jesus speaking to Job. <laughs> from a wild wind. Amen. Oh, he said, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. And Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Genesis 18. Amen. Genesis 18. Amen. Because right there, God told Abraham good things. He told him, you know what? I'm going to visit you in time of life. And your Amen. wife, Sarah, shall have a child. Amen. See that? Amen. He says in verse 14, Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? And you see, he didn't let Abraham answer because of the rhetorical question. But Jeremiah many years ago, when Jeremiah appeared, he said this, There is nothing too hard. Amen. For the Lord. Amen. See that? Oh yes. Before Abraham was, I am. They picked up stones. They knew how to stone the Jews. <laughs> they like stoning. They were used to stoning people. They picked up stones. And he said, wow. Why do you want to stone me? Didn't I multiply the bread and the fish and you ate and you were happy? They said, that's right. Didn't I heal your sick? They said, that's right. In the wedding when you had no wine, didn't I change water into wine? Oh, you're right. But you see, we don't want to stone you for those good stuff. But for one thing, you being a man, you're making yourself God. No, he was not making himself God. He was that very God. He was, it was not even a claim. He was not claiming. He was telling them the absolute truth. There is no absolute truth beside this Bible I'm holding in my hand. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Oh yes. He met Abraham. He met, he met Moses and he told Moses said, but I don't understand this. Mm. Now, when I go there, they will ask me, what's the name of that God? Mm. So Lord, what will I say? Mm. And God spoke. If they ask you that, God tell them, I am mm has sent me we are worshiping and serving the ever-present living god i am has sent me you see that oh yes how do you understand scriptures like this and the rock followed them and that rock was Christ when they were hungry they drank from that rock how are you going to conceive that but only to believe because if you are looking for water in the wilderness you will not be going to a rock that would be the hardest thing in the desert. <laughs> You're looking for an oasis. But the rock. He told him he hit the, the rock once. And the water gushed out. They say it was the sweetest water 
you can never drink. It's just like you remember, uh, you remember Elisha when he healed the waters? They say right now, up to today, up to today, if you want the sweetest, nice water to drink, it's still in that, that place. Because of the word of the man of God. You see that? So, in Hebrews, he's a very prophet told us that uh, God met, took just dust. He formed a body. Said, Michael, enter that. He made another body. Said, Gabriel, enter that. Then he formed another body. He entered in. And phew, they came down. And as they walk, they just act like men. They don't have wings. Oh, there's just a special category of angels that have wings, like seraphims and all that, cherubim. But you see, the angels, like they, you see Brabrand talks about that angel, it was just a man. You wouldn't tell the difference between him and another man. But immediately he arrives, you, they said there was a holy hush. If you have listened to this... Um, the 20th century prophet tab, you see the woman coming to the prophet. And this woman is like a little scared. And he said, no, just come. He's not going to hurt you. They say like, it was like you have entered in a different freezer. It was a different atmosphere. And when he would say, now he's here. I'm taking charge of every spirit. It was not just mere talk. He meant exactly that. And he took control of every spirit. Because it was the Lord doing it. Amen. It was not just a man. The angel of the covenant Amen. had just arrived. Amen. See that? Amen. Well, they came down. They were just walking as men. They were dusty. You know, they could greet other people. Oh, hi, hello, how are you? The way they greeted at that time. And they, as they, they were visiting the father of faith, Abraham. And of course, let's look at the home of Abraham just for a minute. The prophet also told, told us, that now there was the home, Sarah was a little fussy. And uh, uh, she was trying to pick a quarrel with uh, her husband, Abraham, and said, you know, I met Miss Lot. If you look at that hairdo. <laughs> and you see the caravans, when they pass, you know, from those sides, you know, the caravans used to pass, go into Egypt. And you see the, those material, the cotton viscose that they would buy and make the modern fashions and say, but look at this dress. Abraham tell me, how many years do I have to wear this? <laughs> Sarah was a little fussy. <laughs> and you see why the enemy is trying to set up Abraham so if he can get in, then the home will not be a fit environment for Jehovah and the holy angels to visit the home. Amen. You see, we don't realize this ourselves. But you see, we should realize this because we have so much given to us in this evening time that we should not better than the people of other ages. I told you you can learn from Cornelius. In Acts chapter 10, this man, the Bible says his whole house was under the fear of God. Praying, fasting, giving alms to the needy until God dispatched an angel to come and visit the home and come and talk to Cornelius. 
If it was a home where there is all this garbage flowing in, the angel would never have visited that home. You can live in heaven on earth. You can create an environment where God can step in that environment and come to fellowship with you. Amen. The scripture says in the book of, uh, I think it's the book of uh, Luke chapter 23, 24, which says now Cleopas uh, with his friend going to Amos, they were talking about the word of God. They were talking about the things that had happened. And because of that, it drew Jesus to them. When you are sharing in your home about God, not about sports, not about that team, not about this garbage of Trump and Russia, not about all this stuff, shouting about Jesus. Amen. Jesus comes in the home. Praise God. So now, the prophet told us, Abraham didn't get into that. Just took his chair and went and sat right in front of the house. See that? Had he gotten involved in that, he would have missed that moment. One of these days we will preach on why it is necessary not to miss church. Because you see, we get into this kind of formalism. You know where, oh, it has always been like that. I've had that before. Let me tell you, you know the man called Thomas? When Jesus came, and this was a great moment, his reason, his reason, he was not even there. They were in a closed building, and he just showed up. There were no walls cracked, there was no ceiling busted. You see that? You know, in the resurrection, the body you have travels like a thought. It is so fast that it will go through the wall without disturbing the molecules in there, without causing a crack. Oh yes, science has proved. You know, Dr. Einstein, he said, if you have two objects going towards each other at such a tremendous speed, they will grow through each other without disturbing the molecules. That's how Jesus would move. And he just came in. And when he left, he didn't say open the door, just vanished. Can you imagine such a speed? But it was a bodily resurrection. See that? Amen. Now I was studying a little bit. The Jehovah's Witness, they say that uh, they believe in replacement and not resurrection. They deny that Jesus Christ resurrected bodily. But they say it was just a spiritual resurrection. But if you ask, what about the body he appeared in? They say, oh, that, he got just another body. But you see, we don't believe in reincarnation. We don't believe in replacement. We believe in resurrection. Amen. Amen. The same you that is going down is the same you that will come up. Amen. The only difference is it will be a glorified body. But the same you, that is what resurrection means. The same one going down is the same one coming up. Amen. Not a different person. Hallelujah. Amen. The religions of the East, like Buddhism, Taoism, they talk about reincarnation. That when you die, you come up. It could be maybe in a dog if you're a bad man. If you're a good person, you come up as a cow because people milk, milk, get milk from a cow. We don't believe in any of that stuff. We believe in resurrection. Jesus said, I will rise on the that day. Bodily 
resurrection. So now, back to the text a little bit here. So now, they finally reaches Abraham's house. And if you watch, Sarah did not even know who those people were. In fact, the prophet of God said, Sarah was like, look at that guy, the husband. He's kneeling down before another man. I think he's losing his mind. No, 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 no. He's, he was not losing his mind. He knew that that was Jehovah God. Amen. 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 Not just any man. No, he had a revelation. Sarah didn't have a revelation. And as I told you some time ago, sometimes you say, oh, it will take this number of years. Let me tell you something. The scripture says that because of the attitude of Sarah, it took 25 years for the promised son Isaac to come because Sarah was still saying, take Hagar. You see that? Sarah was still saying, it's not me. I'm too old. But look at when Paul got the revelation of what happened. He said it was not until Sarah judged him righteous, him that promised. Once she now judged him righteous, then the miracle had to take place. But until then, you are not going to get anything from the Lord. If you have one leg in the world and another one in the church, you will never get anything from God. Amen. It is better you put both legs in the world or you decide enough with the world, I'm going to put both legs in Christ. Amen. Then God Amen. can begin to manifest himself and work in your life. Amen. Until then, just forget about it. Amen. See that? Amen. And welcome the man. Now you watch, where Jehovah was sitting, the tent was just behind him. And begin to discern, and begin to speak, and discern even what was happening. He said, where is your wife Sarah? He said, it's behind the tent. See that? He said, why did Sarah laugh? Sarah laughing? And if you look at the scripture, it was not, it was not like, a, you know, I'm so happy I'm laughing. The laughter was like to say this. Oh yeah, you're saying that? Where were you when I was a young girl? You see the way we say in America, oh yeah. <laughs> Where were you? That time I couldn't get a baby now is when you're saying that? Until you judge him faithful. You are not going to get the baby. It's not that God wants to heal you a hundred years from now. God wants to heal you now. If you can appropriate the faith to receive from him. Praise God. So well, now Abraham said this and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor, in thy sight, my Lord. But remember there were three. Three men. Amen? Amen. Three men. Don't make a mistake of saying one was the father, the son. The... No, no, no. Three men. One was Jehovah. Two were angels. Walking in flesh. You couldn't tell the difference from them from any other ordinary man because they were in flesh just like you are and just like I am. Amen. Amen. See that? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Dust all of our fresh water so you can wash and I, I, I make some food for you. Milk and butter. 
<laughs> you see, now Jehovah in the flesh can eat. Outside the flesh, he cannot eat. You know that? You see, there are certain needs we have because we are in this body. Once you get out of those bo this body, you don't have those needs no more. That's why when Brabrandon saw the saints behind the curtain of time, they told him, here, we don't eat, but we just leave. He said, let me see. These beautiful women are hugging me. You see, he realized that it was a translation. Nothing. You see that? You know, sometimes people are so carnal. Like the way I talk with the Muslim and I say they're so carnal. They say, God could never have had a son because you want to tell me God will marry and have a wife? No, that's not what we are saying. You are saying that because you are polluted in your mind. You are carnal in your mind. Amen. Jehovah is a creator. He can create somebody just like the way he created Adam without a wife. Amen. Or without a woman, if I may say so. He just creates. He doesn't need a wife. That's right. Once you are in this body, you realize in this body, you know, there are certain things you will do because you are in the body. So, he realized he was in a translation. <laughs> he looked back. He saw his body on the bed. Science can't touch that. It's beyond science. It's beyond the realm of science. Science can't touch God because God is eternal. Science is time. God does not dwell in time. God is eternal. So you cannot use some material of time to try and tap into eternity. Amen. That's why some people say there is no God. Mm. So, but if you look at what they're, what they're thinking and what they're saying, it's because you know, they, they just can't on people. So they think there is nothing outside what they see. That all they see is what, what, what there is. But there is so much that there is that you don't even see. So anyway, uh, God designed what Sarah was thinking, what Sarah was saying. And I want you to understand, in our time, here we have a man in the hand of God. He would turn his back and say, Genesis 18. All our people did not know what that meant. Genesis 18. And he would turn his back. He would even begin to design even the people. The hearts of people who are even outside the walls. And even say the way they dressed. And say what is in their hearts. Genesis 18. Being fulfilled. God came down. In the form of his word, Amen. in the flesh of a man, a prophet, to speak to this dying generation, to call a people to get ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the sweet part of this, Abraham, now when he saw this, he realized this is a great moment. And he said this, if I have found favor in thy sight, pass me not, I pray thee from thy servant pass me not isn't that sweet to know that he is passing by if you can just know he's passing by if you can just know jesus is passing by will you hold your peace would you say I'm so dignified of this college degree I can't say anything you know let me just keep quiet there to look like I'm you know you are going to die when he passed Jericho 
the blind man by the highway side begging begin to shout to the top of his voice and maybe said something like this savior savior do not pass me by while thou art calling others do not pass me by they said keep quiet hold your peace meaning shut up don't say a word but you see if you are in trouble you see it is you who is wearing the shoes that knows where it pays and because it is you it is not your brother it is you it's not your sister it is you you need god i need god you are going to shout and say savior savior if i found favor in your sight do not pass me by he will come he will come if you read the text jesus had in fact passed but you see he had his voice in the prayer land there is a dimension that god is going to hear your prayer oh yes we will have many people praying but if you have your prayer is a prayer of faith god is going to hear that prayer he catches your voice in the prayer land the angel of the lord told cornelius that your prayers have come before the throne of god god has had you and he sent me to tell you what you should do he shouted he walked back he said bring him they said blind but mass be of a cheerful heart the master calleth you the master is calling you he just threw that clock that rob he had for the blind i don't need this no more he didn't care as long as the master is calling you and you see here the master is talking to him what do you want me to do for you Jesus walks in the church and he asks you what do you want me to do for you but some of us we are so dry we think it's a man asking us and you don't say anything speak speak the word you've got to understand this by the words of your mouth thou shall be condemned and by the words of your mouth thou shall be justified every time we stand trial every day you open your mouth to speak you are on trial but you can speak a voice of faith and the lord jesus can come in and come to where you are sitting right now and ask you what you want me to do for you and he said i want to receive my sight and jesus said according to your faith receive your sight and that man you could see him jump you knew something happened the scripture said he joined the procession praising god something happened Amen. I'm sure if God does something for you and you know God has done it for you, you're going to shout, you're going to worship God. You are not going to sit there as a dead wood or as a rock. They said, Stop them. He said, You know what? This is prophecy being fulfilled. Even if I stop them, these rocks you see over here, God is able to turn them and they're going to shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. I don't want any rock shouting when I'm supposed to shout. I'll do the shout by myself. Savior, Savior, do not pass me by. I need you. I need you. Did he pass? He didn't pass. Amen. Now read the chapter. See the good stuff he told Abraham. Hallelujah. I don't have time, so I just have to conclude. But I'm going to conclude with these words. In the message preached in 1953, I perceive 
that thou art a prophet. Cornersville, Indiana. Paragraph 42. Here Abraham says, he says, and I looked, and there was a bunch of uh, shattered buses sitting there. I know one of them was Memphis. And as I said, what are you doing over here? There was another young woman in the crowd, mm. blind. And he knew that these people must have come from Memphis because we had a lot of charters buses from Memphis. So he's talking to this girl and you know, I want you to understand this. There are, maybe to give you a little just background here. Now, the place where the meeting was, it was packed that you could not even come close to the building. If you have this book, it was the first book I read and turned my life. A prophet visits South Africa. Do you know what? The campground, people were coming, ambulances were coming, people were coming. You would stop many miles away because there was no way. You wouldn't even see the campground. But right miles and miles away where you stopped, the angel of the Lord is still healing. God's hand is not short that you can't save. Amen. The psalmist said, even if I make my bed in the lowest hell, his hand is not short and his land will still get me from there. Amen. And if you go beyond the highest, his hand will still. That's how wonderful and powerful the love of God is. Amen. You can't exhaust it. Even if we write, we'll finish all the sticks, all the, the oceans will run dry, the pens, the, 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 the ink in the pens will, we, we, we're not even have finished to write a quarter of the love of God. So anyway, the place was packed. And you know, this little girl had over the radio, the dams, the lay. People without eyes are getting healed. And he said, I'm going. I'm going to receive mine. But there, were, there was no possible way she could reach the preacher. So people are in the crowd there. The building is already full. But now watch. Here, a prophet leaves, and he's in the crowd, and no one knows that Bebranum is in the crowd. He's not in the building, he's in the crowd. Jesus knows where you are. He knows where you live. He knows where you live. Do you remember that person who prayed and said, oh God, may I be given number one prayer card, so I'll be the first person. And they gave him, it was 90 something. It's like, Lord. But now when Pope begins to pray, he, begin, he started on that number. He called that number. He didn't say number one. So that number became number one. You see, God knows you. If you have faith in God, there are no enough devils in hell to stop the hand of God from reaching you. Just have faith in God. Don't limit God. Don't box God in your little mind or in my little mind. God is so great. Just say, Lord, I believe it. If they ask you, sister, do you believe it? So with all my heart, I believe it. So begin to talk to that God. And that girl is crying. She's been crying. Can somebody take me to the hill? 
Can Samba take me to the hill? Was African American girl. And because of the crowd, they get separated with the father. Now she even doesn't know where the father is. And she said, if I just reach the hill, I'll find my father. Why? Because it's already done. You see these things, when I hear, when I meet people and they say there is no God, you know, sometimes I'm short of words to tell them. Sometimes I hold myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> so begin to talk to her. Begin to say, oh, but by the way, how did you come here? And who are you? And begin to have a conversation. But she doesn't know. She's having a conversation with the prophet. <laughs> so now, she begins to say, if somebody can just take me to that man, the hill, I'll find my dad. And Brabram's heart drops down. When, you know, it was sadness. Said, you know what? When I was a little girl, you know, I went to see the doctor. They took me to the doctor. And the doctor said, when these cataracts will be ripe. So I even don't know what that means to be ripe. But they told me, when they get ripe, they will operate them. Now they're saying, if they carry out an operation, they will remove the optical. So, there is nothing they can do for me now. But I know, if I can just see the healer, I'll see again. So, Brother said something like this. Maybe I'm the person you are looking for. She grabbed him. She grabbed his coat so tight. When Brabana said, okay, 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 let, just let, he said, no, I can't let you go. I can't let you go. Please, do not pass me by. Do not pass me by. You know, that song was sung by Annie Crosby, who lived around 18 something and died in 1915. It was a woman who was blind. But a beautiful voice sung for God. The non-believers wanted to use that voice. She says, oh no, my voice is for Jesus. Amen. Blind. And you know what? She got married. <laughs> yeah. Branham talks about him a lot here. You know, the critics came to, to her and said, you know what? How will you know him? You know that song, I shall know him. When I touch, that's Annie Crosby. Savior, Savior, that's Annie Crosby. They say she got an inspiration when he read this story of blind but mass. And just got an inspiration, Savior, Savior. While thou art calling, don't pass me by, Lord. I need you. I need you. Praise God. So grab the prophet. And the prophet said, okay, okay, you know. You know, just, uh, it, it was a fight just to get out. Okay, let me hold, let me hold your hands. You know, so try to sort of manage. <laughs> uh, so, Abraham said, okay, I want you to do this. I want you to close your eyes and don't look until I tell you. She said, sir, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you just get me in where, oh no, I just, I, I'm trying to jump this so I can save some little time. Uh, okay, now, let me just, uh, she said, is you the healer? I said, no, ma'am. I said, I'm Brad Branham. Jesus is the healer. And she grabbed me. She said, oh, Brad Branham, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And I thought of poor old blind Fanny Crosby. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. And I looked and I thought, her only hope is Christ. I said, now, I don't want to be recognized in the crowd. I don't want to be recognized in the crowd. 
But I want you to understand this. God had the cry of that African American girl and led the prophet to where she was. No president would go there. You see that? I said, first, I want to hold your hand while I'm praying. I couldn't get her hand off of my coat. She wasn't going to let me go. <laughs> she reminds me of Jacob, who said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. See that? But if it's you and you just let it go, as if you don't want it. You see that? Do you really want it? Then hold tight on him. <laughs> and I said, now, let me have your hand. She said, don't pass me by. And I took a hold of her hand, pulled it off, and held her hand. And while I was praying, now, you can't you can mark this as fanatism if you want to. You see, that would be between you and God. See, I could only tell the truth. Something happened. I knew the woman was healed. I was waiting for the shrinkage of the cataracts. She said, something cold went over me. What I was telling you, people would come and it's like a freezer. It's like some icy cold. Said something cold went in my eyes. But that's the power of the Lord burning and shrinking those cataracts. God doesn't have to catch you to do that. See that? I said, just raise your hand. I said, now, open your eyes. For thus says the Holy Spirit, you've received your sight. And she opened her eyes. And she said, is that light? And I said, yes. And you see, he said, but what about those dark spots I'm seeing? And he says, now God is adjusting those eyes. So she can begin now to see clearly. Oh, wow. You see the goodness of our Lord? Amen. But you know what? He's the same. Amen. He's the same. Amen. You don't have to go to Jeffersonville to experience his power. You don't have to go to Fukui for Germany to experience his power. You don't have to go to lie in the, gra in the grave where he lay to experience his power. Just believe it. Amen. Wherever you are, whichever country you are, Amen. you may be on the road and you can kneel down and experience the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Only believe it. Well, I don't want to read all this, but anyway, right there, there was a man, an old man, and this old man, a wagon ran over his leg. His leg was so twisted, broken, turned this side, turned this, this way, with a walking stick. This man was watching what was happening. And this man said, Brother Branham, I know you. Look at me. I have children. You want to pass me by? How can you pass by? How can Jesus pass by? And right quick, he goes to the man. He said, do you believe it? He said, give me your walking stick. He handed the walking stick to Brother Branham. So that says the Lord, you're healed. In the name of Jesus, his legs straightened out. But that time, is the crowd wanted to tell Brother Branham, and he just vanished and left. Do not pass me by. The problem is, we don't have faith in God. But you know what? You can still appropriate that faith. You can still speak to God and say, Lord, do not pass me by. He's so good. He's a wonderful God. He's here to close this edge to show that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his power is not limited. That it can't save. 
His power is not limited that you can't heal. He's still the same Jesus except the body he lived in. But he's walking over here. You can just touch him. As the singer said, said, you know, when he's passing by, Jesus is passing by, he's passing by, you can just stretch your hand. He's not going to pass here in the scarred body he was in. No. But in the form of the Holy Spirit, he passes here. And by faith, you can touch him. Praise God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. Lord Jesus Christ, oh God, if there is somebody here who has faith, Lord, to receive whatsoever they want from you, Lord, after hearing your word, Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, that may you give them whatever they're looking for Hallelujah. may you give them lord jesus the substance by which they're praying for in the name of jesus christ we condemn every unclean spirit to depart right now in the name of jesus christ every sickness every demon every uncleanness that has sat on our healing oh god for a long time right now satan you've been dislodged you liar devil get out in the name of jesus christ and leave god's children alone father we thank you as your power moves in this church i know you are still the same jesus the resurrection power of jesus christ in this place to heal the sick to make your promises beyond amen you are doing the same things you did when you were here about two thousand years ago even in the center that has just gone by you are still the same god who in jesus granted father in the name of jesus christ we shout the victory hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord thank you lord thank you father Jesus is passing this way, this way.